şuğun keçik çıkışımdan size de bir feydalı mağlumat bulur deyip ümit edin. Şu sayaki aydın şiyalı, benim bir şey dedim çıkışımı. Yönü son ki 17 yılın içinde ben Amerikan Birleşen Ştatlarının ilk çıkanatını işledim Türkmenistan'a. Ve ilk evlen Türkmen rayet hükmünü hakikaten bizim yurdumuzu, şu Amerikanın devletinin ne mesele işlerler bağı olsa bizim yurdumuzu, şu bizim yurdumuzu kömük kursun, bizim yurdumuzu ehli edip olacak tatları supervise, administer edip şu tatları edip bilmene mümkünçlüğüm oldu. Şu an sizden paylaşmana şu gün makul bildim. So uh, the work that I did for the last 17 years before moving here was uh, cultural diplomacy and um, that was actually encompassing a lot of stuff and obviously there are lots of things that are included into that uh, and, but most importantly is the power of people. So being uh, not necessarily a diplomat because I was not trained a diplomat but during the last 17 years what I did was uh, encouraging diplomacy and encouraging people to people exchanges and building institutional linkages between people in the United States and Turkmenistan. So we were working on both ways and um, I, my primary goal uh, at the embassy was really liaising and um, being that person who manages both sides and helps uh, people to achieve their um, goals and primarily was, uh, that was to achieve those in education, culture, sports, tourism, religion, many, many areas. So that's the beauty of uh, cultural diplomacy because that includes a lot of uh, areas there. And uh, obviously during the 17 years we did a lot of things uh, and I just wanted to, I didn't want to take a lot of time because <laughs> you can uh, really talk about it for years. But uh, so during these 30, 30 minutes I would like to talk about the major project that I did uh, while I was working there. So um, uh, the first thing I think that uh, started to along with the independence of Turkmenistan was uh, that Ashabad and Albuquerque, New Mexico became sister cities in 1990. And uh, the mayor of Ashabad came to Albuquerque and um, in July they si signed a, a memorandum of understanding for partnership. And uh, there is a, an organization which is called Sister Cities International. Uh, which is found and based in the United States that, uh, and that, rec that was recognized by that organization as an official um, sister cities relationship. And since then, um, there was a lot of exchanges happening. So that's kind of one major highlight and I'll talk about it more. In 2001, another big project that I was a big uh, part of and a manager of uh, was established in 2001 and I will talk more about it. And uh, through that project, we uh, did a lot of work in Turkmenistan to preserve cultural, religious, um, historical um, heritage of Turkmenistan. And in 2011, 2013, uh, for the first time uh, in 2011, through the embassy here, um, embassy of Turkmenistan in the United States, as well as embassy of the United States in Turkmenistan, and both governments were able to do a big project, which is Turkmenistan Culture Days. You know, when you know that in Turkmenistan it's a big thing to organize such events, and it was not possible until, until 2011 to organize something. It took a lot of time and a lot of effort, obviously a lot of um, partners, and I'll talk about it more, because that, that was a significant achievement. And in 2014, we had an expedition with the National Geographic which came to Turkmenistan and did a documentary about the Darwaza crater, about the scientific um, kind of significance of it. At the same time, it was also a new development in the science there. So I wanted to talk about that too. And in 2016, the first ever long-term um, loan of Turkmen um, artifacts from Turkmenistan museums were loaned to the Metropolitan Museum. And that was the first thing. So it's a breakthrough in the history of Turkmenistan because uh, before that there was kind of, I think, misunderstanding, maybe a conception that uh, something might happen to the artifacts. So uh, people outside of Turkmenistan were not able to see any of those artifacts and we were able to work with the government of Turkmenistan and make uh, sure that um, such a thing could happen. And uh, we were really, really happy about this progress. So with this disease uh, international, as I said, in uh, 1990, so 1956, Sister Cities International program was established in the United States, 
And uh, in 1987, while uh, Turkmenistan was still part of the former Soviet Union, an American uh, called Sally Alice Thompson, and she's uh, represented here, she's over 90 now, and still alive and still happy uh, about um, this partnership being um, initiated by her. She traveled to Ashabad and as a you know American tourist on a USSR trip, and she came to Turkmenistan, and she fell in love with Ashabad. And she decided that because she saw the adobe houses, you know, that um, were surrounding, Ash surrounding Ashabat at the time, obviously Ashabat changed significantly since then. But uh, she saw that, and she immediately saw the parallels uh, between um, Ashabat adobe houses as well as the Santa Fe, you know, um, area there in New Mexico. And she said, "This is it. You know, it has to be sister city." So, and she worked hard to make sure that in 1990 Ashabat became a sister city to Ashabat. I mean, to Albuquerque and thousands of people since then, high school exchanges, museums, libraries, you know, you name it, a lot of exchanges happened since then. And people, and um, the Albuquerque uh, Sister Cities International, it is, uh, uh, it has uh, about 12 cities all over the world, and it's a completely volunteer organization as TASA, and they uh, contribute their own finances to go and travel, you know, around the world, and to build long-term uh, partnerships with various educational institutions, just people to people, families to families. And my family was also, back in 1987, our family was the first who um, welcomed Sally Alice to our house. And uh, that's how we were enrolled at that time. And who knew that you know, several lazy, uh, years later, I would be managing that program at, at the embassy. So it was really wonderful for me to, to be able to see how that you know, really evolved and progressed. So if you go to the website of, Asha, of Albuquerque Sister Cities, you will see Ashabat prominently displayed there. And, and I think the highlight, uh, like uh, really the magnitude of this was that uh, in 2013, as, as a part of the second Turkmen Culture Days in the United States, um, Albuquerque uh, invited the delegation of over 70 Turkmen people. It was official delegation, you know, having uh, representatives of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Culture, as well as dancers, um, uh, scientists, uh, journalists, writers, singers, you know, they invited them over, all welcome to their homes, uh, organized a really nice program in, um, in Albuquerque. And these are some highlights, you know, that were happening at the time. You saw the exchange that's happening, you know, Turkmen performing and singing for the Turkmen and for the American uh, crowds there. And at the same time, Turkmen uh, delegation had the chance to go and see museums in Albuquerque, really see why Ashabad became a sister city, you know, why there is such a connection. And I think uh, all of them, and these people, a lot of Americans there, you know, uh, the volunteers, they've all been to Ashabad several times, and usually they um, go during the independence to part, you know, be part of the independence celebrations. Lately, Ashabad has an Ashabad day now on May 25. And that's what uh, when they are trying to go. But we were, you know, facilitating exchanges on a regular basis all the time. So this is just uh, some highlights of that delegation trip. So another highlight uh, and significant collaboration that we had that actually led to uh, Turkmenistan Culture Days in the United States, uh, and it's happening, is uh, the uh, collaboration with the Smithsonian Institution. That's the largest set of um, museum institutions in the world. And I was really happy that um, Dr. Paul Taylor, who is the uh, program director at the Asian Cultural History at the Natural History Museum at the Smithsonian, he uh, always wanted to come to Turkmenistan. And uh, we, you know, he came, approached to us at the embassy, and uh, we were able to help him to come. And again, you know, as anyone who comes to Turkmenistan, he fell in love. And he said, you know, this is really a treasure for any scientist, for any academic. It's a treasure to be here. And uh, we were working hard. And uh, the idea of the Turkmen Culture Days was introduced by the government of Turkmenistan to Dr. T T Taylor. And he said, yeah, I, I really want to help. And uh, during the last three years since he came, we worked really hard on coming up with the program because it doesn't work, you know, it, it works differently here in the United States. Everything is private. And um, so it's not really government to government. You need to find different ways, unique ways of doing things. And uh, thanks to Paul Taylor, as well as his 
um, effort in finding corporate sponsorship. So we worked with Chevron because Chevron was uh, in Turkmenistan at the time. And um, that's how the program came about. So, and uh, during the three years that he, we were working on this project, in addition to all this logistics and, you know, uh, government protocols, all that stuff, um, they, like Dr. Paul, Paul Taylor and his team were uh, also curating the exhibition that will be following and going to the United States and working with the museums in Turkmenistan, really teaching, learning from them, you know, a lot, getting a lot of um, research material as well as um, uh, building that exhibition. So as a result of that collaboration in 2011, the first Turkmen Culture Days in the United States took place here in, um, in Washington, D.C. That was the first installment, and uh, about 50 people came from Turkmenistan, which was sponsored by, you know, the, their travel expenses obviously were sponsored by the government of Turkmenistan, it's a big thing, and uh, on the other end, everything here um, in the United States, in Washington, D.C., was partly sponsored by Chevron, State Department, and we, that was the first time that Turkmenistan government sent such a big delegation here to the United States, so it was a really big deal um, everywhere. And so at the time, again, this was the first time when Turkmenistan was rep represented at the Library of Congress. The event, the main symposium, scientific symposium took place there. And then we're talking about literary arts and poetic arts of uh, Turkmenistan. We had writers, you know, poets who were citing poems. And then uh, for the lunch, we had um, Shukur Bakshi screening with uh, English subtitles, so it was really a really nice event for you know, everyone who was interested in Central Asia, particularly Turkmenistan, who didn't have access to these resources before, so it was uh, really nice in terms of academic research exchange. And at the time, the Library of Congress said that, you know, um, because the Turkmen delegation came with over 100 books that were donated as a gift, presented as a gift to the Library of Congress for people, um, scientists here, anyone to have access to the, um, you know, contemporary materials from Turkmenistan. And uh, he said, you know, they, that the Library of Congress was the, um, the main significant holder of Turkmen materials, and now with adding 100 additional books, that would be even more so. And what happened is, as part of the um, first and second culture days, uh, not only uh, Turkmen were able to speak, uh, you know, and you know, perform at the same time, for all the universities in the area, they were able to go and provide workshops. It, like it was really direct, first-hand kind of interaction for um, any program that was studying music, dance, uh, and literary arts. You know, they were able to talk about um, their work as well as learn from Turkmen colleagues. And as a result of that first um, Turkmen Culture Days, there was a first publication done by uh, Dr. Taylor and his team about Turkmenistan, so that was a catalog for the exhibition as well as kind of introductory, introductory kind of explanation of uh, Turkmen arts before and now type of thing. And then the second culture days that took uh, place uh, two years later, and uh, as you see here, we have Ambassador Razov, who was actively involved as well here on the ground, and this time it was much bigger scale. We had uh, about 80 people coming from Turkmenistan, and uh, the program included Washington, D.C. Uh, main events were held at the Reagan Building in D.C., and then um, the Meridian also hosted a big uh, exhibition as well as reception. And then the second installment took in New York at uh, um, New York American Natural History Museum for the first time again ever we were able to organize a Turkmen exhibition where we had felt makers, um, uh, we also had, you know, the, the, the loom for the rock weaving and all of that stuff, and for the whole day on Saturday, everybody from New York was able to come with families and really learn about Turkmenistan. It was really fascinating because people, you don't even know where Turkmenistan exists, so it was, for me, it was really, like, I really enjoyed this program because that's exactly how, like, why we're here, you know, we want, uh, people to know about our country. So this is this is the things that are happening uh, in the Meridian, in Washington D.C. Our delegation having fun, and that uh, the second installment was um, devoted to Matunguli, and you know because he really was the one who was really fighting and uh, 
I think, encouraging independence for Turkmenistan. And I think that that was very significant because this was done, you know, also around the independence days of Turkmenistan, and we were really building on that factor. So this is the flyer of the event at the time. Things happening at the Reagan building as far as some of the uh, exhibits that we had. And uh, we had, the, you know, representatives from uh, all over particip participating here. Yeah, and again, that was an opportunity in Washington, D.C., New York, Albuquerque. That, that, that was, um, uh, so it was um, about 10 days event, and uh, the third part of it took place in Albuquerque, as I said, and that was really, really um, like eye-opening. So these are some of the highlights from Washington, D.C. And these are the two publications that were done as part of that second installment of Culture Days, also done by uh, Dr. Paul Taylor and his team. So these are really, really nice materials uh, for everyone, and they're available online at academia.edu. So anyone can you know, search for them, and um, it's a good material for anyone who wants to learn more about your Princeton for you to share you know, with anywhere you are. So the next uh, program that uh, I was heavily involved in is uh, the Metropolitan Museum and the exhibition. So there was a big exhibition organized by the Metrop Metropolitan 2016 uh, about the Seljuks. And obviously the theme, the Seljuks, you know, this is where the Seljuks originated from Turkmenistan. And uh, Metropolitan said, no, we have to be involved. We have to find a way to get uh, exhibits from Turkmenistan. Like it will not be complete without it. And they reached out to us um, knowing that the Smithsonian was so uh, successful. And we, we said, yeah, we will definitely help. This is, we can't lose this opportunity. And uh, so we started again. It took us three, three years. Turkmenistan never had such an experience before. They were really doubtful and um, uh, I think a bit fearful uh, because like in the past there were attempts by other famous museums to take artifacts from Turkmenistan like Louvre and others and they were all said no. So we didn't know where what were, but we said we have to try. And uh, we worked on it for three years. It was a lot of legal work, agreements, uh, Metropolitan telling them how it works in practice and like what kind of uh, precautions they take and like transportation, insurance, everything. A lot of things that Turkmenistan really never had, like even now doesn't have. And um, so that was done a lot of, uh, a lot of steps t taken, a lot of trips done by the Metropolitan Museum. And uh, luckily we were able to, so about uh, 270 um, objects from all over the world were represented at the exhibition and we had uh, 13 objects from Turkmenistan. It doesn't seem like a big number, but you know, um, it was a lot of work involved, obviously. And this is the big catalog and scientific catalog that was done as part of the exhibition. It's still available, I think, in the Metropolitan. Anyone who is interested in Seljuk art and history, um, I think would enjoy this. And this is the work that we were doing to include Turkmenistan into this. So, and what happened is that two couriers from Turkmenistan museums, they were sponsored by Metropolitan to come and stay in New York for three months. And they were able to be there on a daily basis and learn from the Met, um, how the Met operates. And uh, so what we had, we had collections from the National Museum and then from Murray Museum and uh, Kunior Genge Museum. So we had a couple of, um, so the most significant, most heavy one, about 100 kilograms, was the, the uh, stone that was put on a soldier grave, which is called Balbal. So it was found in Balkan province in 1960, and it is stored at the National Museum. And then we had very beautiful pieces of stuccos from Mihrab of the Dandanakan Dandana uh, Mosque in Mari. And we also had a set of gold bracelet and gold rings as well as uh, lots of medical instruments that were uh, kept in Marie Museum from the ancient Merv that were uh, significantly um, and prominently displayed at the, so this is, these are some of the exhibitions that were, you know, they were, they, because they, these are like medieval artifacts, uh, metropolitan, like I was really impressed on how they handled, you know, they hire special company that does the transportation of cultural objects specifically, you know, for that such kind of museums, like so much, 
the special cradle, like special transportation, everything was so special, and everything was left to, to Turkmenistan museums after that. So now they have all the resources that they can use to take them. And then success of the Seljuk exhibition with the Metropolitan resulted in two new developments. This year, Turkmenistan, uh, for the second time now, they have the experience, they loaned uh, Gonur de Pei objects to the uh, big exhibition traveling in Germany right now, which is a big achievement, and uh, thanks to the Metropolitan uh, exhibition that led to the experience that the Turkmenistan now has. And the second one is that the Metropolitan signed an, uh, an agreement with Turkmenistan to do uh, archaeological research uh, on one of the sites, medieval sites, also in uh, Mara region. And they're working there now. So another project that were really successful was with the National Geographic. Uh, it's a you know, uh, kind of popular academic um, research program that they had. They had an idea of the documentary about Darwaza Crater. You know, it's, it's, everybody knows about it, but no one has a really chance to go and see it. Uh, and that's why they decided to do a, a, a documentary about it. So we helped the, the National Geographic team to come in the fall of 2013, and they were there for 10 days to shoot. To shoot. So this, is, this was the first ever, again, um, such an expedition to Turkmenistan's Darwaza Crater and explorer George Kronis, he actually was the first person to go inside. And I'll show you the pictures. So, and, and uh, here you could just, you know, for the sake of seeing like how big it is, it is 69 meters uh, wide and uh, 30 meters deep, so it's quite huge. And what he did is another scientific kind of contribution was that he, the goal was to collect some soil samples and to do the biological analysis to see what's, what was there and to see if there anything, like any microbes, anything that are in organisms that survive in such a climate there. And uh, believe it or not, they found some organisms. So here, George is preparing to enter the crater. So it took him several attempts because he says, I, I was preparing in Canada. He's from Canada. I was preparing for a long time, just doing the, the kind of uh, tests uh, in Canada. But when he came, he said, oh my gosh, do I really want to do that? So he was really, really, um, he didn't know whether he wanted to continue. And here, here he is going down to, to get some samples. So it's like, and the way they built the documentary was really, really cool as well, like really, fun, you know, counting because he has like a, an oxygen tank there and he needs to really be, you know, back up while the oxygen is still there. So what they found is that uh, back, coming back to the United States, they found, uh, and they did the samples both in the crater as well as outside of the crater, and they found that there are mi microorganisms that are living there, which proves that, you know, that maybe there's you know, some other planets in the universe like Mars where some kind of organisms are also living similar to that environment because it's really, really high heat. And uh, they were not able to find the same microorganisms in the soil on, you know, on already above the ground. So showing that this is unique organism really, really, really thriving there. And then another program that I, I am personally really proud of is the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation. So in 2001, um, the United States government and Congress in particular, they came up with a program to help um, countries preserve the natural you know, cultural heritage, which is both um, you know, architecture as well as intangible heritage like music, language, dance, and uh, Turkmenistan, thanks to the work that we did um, at the embassy, is number one country uh, that received the most uh, number of projects, awards. And I'll just go briefly through the... So over, uh, since 2019, almost like 20 years now, um, about 100 cultural preservation projects were supported in over 125 countries and over 55 million in general were uh, invested in these projects in, in all over the world. What happened is in Turkmenistan, we were able to work with various institutions in Turkmenistan to support 25 projects. And they're all over Turkmenistan, so I'll just quickly go through them. So in 2001, uh, the first project that we uh, funded was in um, the, the Portal of the mosque in the mausoleum of Sayyid Jamal al-Din in an now And uh, I'll show the pictures, uh, what, how does that look. So what happened is, is that this is the, um, 
in the 15th century most that was destroyed during the 1948 earthquake and everything collapsed and it had a very beautiful portal. So the, uh, there is the, the organization which is called the National Administration for Culture Preservation under the Ministry of Culture. That was our main partner and they had really good specialists that also worked with international experts to do most of the projects here. And the second project was to do the uh, preservation of the fresco, wall frescoes at ancient Nisa. So this is the result of the first project, preservation of the dragon mosque, um, you know, the depiction of the dragons at the Sayyid Jamaluddin Mosque, which was very interesting. It is at the Fine Arts Museum now. So basically the project just gave an opportunity for, any, like for research as well as uh, for the people to really see what the project is like, what the mosque is about before, otherwise it was all collapsed and you no know, one had access to it. So in 2003, we were able to preserve, to, to support the conservation work at the 11th century Muslim, also Abu Tayyar, in, um, which is uh, close in the Hanf province, close to Dushok, and uh, that project also was significant because we were able to uh, preserve um, the dome and other structures that were about to fall. And in 2004, uh, we were able to grant the, the funds to the uh, Carpet Museum of Turkmenistan. They had a rare collection of old uh, 18th, 19th, 20th century carpets, and we worked uh, with the local you know, uh, experts. They're really like a handful, just two or three, who can work uh, on restoration of um, old carpets, and we're able like, to provide all the materials, uh, equipment that they, that they lacked at the time. Now, you know, they have a bigger museum. Projects were given. One was uh, in Kuni Urgench in Sultan Takesh Mausoleum, and the second one was Aksa Riding Tower. It's like a really small tower which was completely buried underground, and uh, the Institute of History worked on that one to restore. And in 2006, we were able to um, give two more. So, and uh, what the significance of this one was that um, we now started working also on intangible cultural heritage. So the Institute of Manuscripts came up with a project on projects on preserving manuscripts and you know, interpreting in them from like because they were written in Farsi, in Arabic, and they were also started the project on interpreting them to Turkmen. And these were really old manuscripts that were able to help as well to come to bring you know the special manus like manuscript restoration paper from Japan. So everything is very specialized. They didn't didn't have access to it like materials, we brought a specialist from the Library of Congress who specializes in manuscript restoration and she taught the, you know, the specialists there to really how to do it properly so that you don't ruin the uh, manuscripts and they go uh, for a long time. And the second project was Gonur Depe, you know, this is the famous site from uh, you know, 5,000 years ago that was opened by Victor Bajj Saryamidzi in Margush, Mare region. And what happened is that, unfortunately, because everything is clay in Turkmenistan um, and it's 5,000 years old, so, uh, you know, you, just, you expose it. Yes, it's, it's good to, for people to see, but, you know, with the rain and everything, things like wall starts start to disappear and we're able to give uh, some funding so that some walls were reconstructed in such a way that the original kind of um, processes were used and the local materials were used. Not, not, not modern materials, but the you know, original materials that were used at the time, uh, and the same process we used to recreate the, some of the walls. And in 2007, additional projects, and uh, second phases actually of the same projects that were uh, awarded last year was, were given as well. And then we extended to Balkan region, where there's also a very significant uh, historic site and the mausoleum of Mashat Atta in ancient Dehistan, which is the medieval city as well on the Silk Road. And we worked with them to restore some of the um, structures and the beautiful mihrab in that um, mosque. And uh, we also worked, there's a huge uh, complex in Dashaguz, um, which is called Ismam Atta uh, mausoleum and the big kind of madrasa and everything that w that's part of it. So this was like a three stage project um, worth of over $200,000 overall, and we worked uh, with the Institute of History to do that project. 
And then we worked with the National Library on conservation and restoration of rare and valuable books as well. They had over 50,000 books that were in a very bad condition. And uh, the same type of thing, we, we had uh, specialists that came from the United States, worked with them, and we bought a lot of materials, a lot of um, equipment, specialized equipment, as well as training. Um, in 2011, that was a record year where four projects were awarded and uh, that included one uh, by the Fine Arts Museum, which had a collection, like very beautiful panels um, from the fifth century Zoroastrian temple. And uh, so they worked on that one. And the second one on the, was working on Najmat Akbar's uh, mausoleum in Kinyur Genj, uh, which also was completely closed for people. No one was, was able to see that because it was, um, what happened is the dome collapsed and the uh, beautiful kind of majolica stones and uh, uh, ceramics were all um, uh, damaged during that collapse of the, of the portal. And what uh, the, the local ceramist, uh, uh, Bakhtiar, he worked on restoration of that ceramics. So it now it's very beautiful. Anyone can actually go and see the, the, the result of that work. And then we worked uh, with the Institute of History on the second phase of this Mamutata mo monument. And, uh, Another thing that was a big thing that for the first time were awarded uh, over 600, like almost seven, $700,000 we, we, we gave to ancient uh, MERV uh, to do the preservation and kind of scientific research of uh, and there's a, a bigger one and a smaller one there. And uh, the Institute of National Administration worked on that one. And then we worked with the National Conservatory of Turkmenistan for the preservation of unique um, records. So what happened is 1960s, there was a large expedition, scientific expedition to all the layouts of Turkmenistan to do the recordings of you know, all the folklore, dance, singing, music. And that was all done in the old kind of bobbin tapes. And they were all kind of damaged by, because with the time and what we did is we helped them to restore those and digitize, and now it's available online uh, on the National Conservatories and Ministry of Culture's website, as well as the uh, actual discs uh, uh, that, you know, on, and digital versions of it as available for, for the research to, to be conducted, because a lot of those uh, folklore forms and traditions disappeared, unfortunately, since then. So this is the uh, completion ceremony for the National Conservatories project. As you see, they have like really uh, all like about I think 30 uh, DVDs now, like full of material from that uh, scientific expedition. And um, another project that we did was awarded in 2012 was in Lebap Elayat and Dayahat and Sarai, Karawan Sarai, um, which had uh, was also in a very bad condition. And people were not allowed to go there because like, th things were really crumbling and were about to fall. Um, so people, it, it wasn't safe for the people to go. And we worked with the national administration to do the preservation of that and reconstruction of some of the arches and portals. This is at Gizgala. So in 2015, Fine Arts Museum worked also, they had the, so there was a big uh, collection of the 5,000 year old um, mosaics that were found at Gonordepe that no one had access to as well because they were all, like the scientists, when they, the archaeologists, they uncovered that material, but uh, no one was able to work on that to kind of recover. So they were all, all just closed in chests and uh, kept at the storage at the Fine Arts Museum. So uh, we worked with the Institute of Restoration from Russia. Uh, the specialists came here and worked together with the Turkmen specialists. And this is now on a, ter in a uh, permanent display at the Fine Arts Museum where everyone has access to and can see the beautiful 5,000 year old mosaics. And this is the, um, the one of the last projects we did, the 13th century mosque. Um, so the only portal that is remaining from that era in the Histan is about also, as you see, like with the time, the two arches are, you know, uh, going closer to each other. Now they're working on building 
kind of reconstructing uh, that uh, portal so that uh, we, at least this, this structure survives. And this is how um, some of the restoration uh, that was completed at Dayahatin in, in the Bap region at Karawansarai looks like. And the preservation of Gizgala project was also, it spanned for six years and uh, was completed last year. And a big article about it and the research, the findings, what happened is also available at academia.edu by Ruslan Muradov. He wrote a, um, an article about that work. And this is how it looks now. So if you haven't been to Merv, if you um, go back, just you know, take a chance to go and see how it looks now. It's, it's um, a lot of work was done during the six years to preserve that because, as I say, everything is clay, and with time, especially irrigation uh, in that area, that really damaged the monument a lot. So this is briefly about the work that I did um, during the last 17 years, and um, in really helped uh, Turkmenistan. To, to preserve the culture and share its culture um, with the rest of the world. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And uh, it, it was an honor for me to speak here today. And if you have any questions later on that come up, or I don't know if you have any additional questions, you know, um, my email, I can't really see it, but it's, it's easy. It's maya underscore at yahoo.com. So you can always. Yeah, as far as preservation projects, um, I know that the uh, Dayahatin project is still going on. Uh, and I'm sure, I mean, I, I left in 2017. And I, um, my colleagues, I'm sure, picked up and uh, will continue that work as well. But these, these are like uh, the big, big projects. Obviously, there's lots of um, work done to facilitate exchanges um, on both sides. Thank you. Thank you.